بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته The topic is about Tawheed The call of all messengers of Allah However, this topic usually is a little bit technical. There are no stories. There are no jokes. It is a serious topic. However, it is the most important topic you could ever learn in your entire life. And I'm not exaggerating. Without Tawheed, you cannot enter paradise. Full stop. Shaykh, I'm a good person. I pray. I fast. I give zakat. I have a lot of charity. Let me repeat this. Maybe you did not hear me well. Without Tawheed, you cannot enter Jannah. Because Jannah requires a key. And the only key suitable for the lock of Jannah is Tawheed. Allah Azza wa Jal says, and most of them believe in Allah while they are in the state of shirk. The majority, the vast majority of us believe in Allah, but we are still associating others with Allah, as I will inshallah point out in a quick fashion if possible, so that the time would not yani, rush us. This ayah indicates that it is an obligation upon each one of us to purify his faith. Because Allah says, وَمَا يُؤْمِنُوا أَكْثَرُهُمْ بِاللَّهِ إِلَّا وَهُمْ مُشْرِكُونَ The vast majority do not believe in Allah and, uh, except that they associate others with Him. So in order for us to enter Jannah, we have to purify our faith, our Iman. Tawheed is the only thing that saves you from shirk. And it is the da'wah of all messengers of Allah. It is the call of all messengers of Allah, of Nuh, of Salih, of Shu'ayb, of Ibrahim, Moses, Jesus, all of them. Allah says in so many places in the Quran, O oh my people, worship Allah, you have no deity other than Him. Then will you nor fear Him? This is the call of Nuh to his people. The call of Salih to uh, uh, Thamud. The call of Shu'ayb to Madian. The call of every single prophet. Allah confirms this when He says in the Quran, And we certainly sent into every nation a messenger, saying, Worship Allah and avoid Taghut. Tawheed again. And this is the core purpose of creating the humans and the jinn. Sometimes we get these ideas. Why did Allah create us? And the answer comes to you in the Quran. And I did not create the jinn and the mankind except to worship me. So again, Tawheed. But nowadays, we watch a lot of the media. We have social platforms, social media. We have Face Help or Facebook as they call it. We have Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, the whole nine yards. And in it, we also have deviant calls trying to repel you to make you stay away from Tawheed. Don't listen to Tawheed. People who call Tawheed are Wahhabis, are Salafis, are this and that. They hate the Prophet They do this, they do that. So ignorant people would buy what they're selling. People of intellect like you, inshallah, would not do that. They say, I have my brains. If the Sheikh is speaking trash, I can tell. 
And if he's speaking logic from the Quran and from the Sunnah, would you reject this? No way. So listen to what I have to sell you. And if you're buying, I'm giving it to you for free. All what I need is Jazakallahu Khairan. Ya Rabbi Lak Alham. This is more than sufficient for me. What is Tawheed? And where did you get this word? One of the da'is once was approached by someone. And this lady was asking him to promote Tawheed in his talks. He was so mad that he blasted on her saying, where is Tawheed in the Quran? If Tawheed was important, it would have been in the Quran. So come, let us, he, he has a point in a way. Or does he? Is Tawheed mentioned in the Quran by name? No. But the whole of the Quran is on what? On Tawheed. But I will come to explain to you what is the meaning of Tawheed that we're talking about. However, footnote. This is out of the lecture. It is crucial. It is extremely important that you be careful of people who would like to segregate Quran from the rest of the deen. Claiming that whatever is in the Quran, we will take. Whatever is not in the Quran, we will not take. Is this logical? Is there in the Quran that Fajr is two, Rak'ah, Maghrib is three, and the rest are four? Is there in the Quran that Zakat can be 2.5%, can be 5%, can be 10%, can be 20%? These are Four types of zakat. Say, Shaykh, we only know 2.5. Well, see, this is why Shaykh come to you. I, ha I can teach you, but I won't now. My topic is Tawheed. Let me stick to Tawheed. So, what is the biggest and most dangerous fitna in the whole world? I'm asking. Shirk. Hello. They did have lunch late. I didn't have lunch, that's why I'm a little bit hyper. Social media. Social media, no. If you don't know the biggest fitna on earth, you are in trouble. Huh? Riba. Hmm. No? A'udhu billahi mishtar. Am I in the wrong place? Or what? Women. Women, I wish, but no. More dangerous than women. The Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, there is no messenger or prophet that was sent to his people except he warned from the greatest fitna ever. The Dajjal. Subhanallah. How don't you, how do you not know the greatest fitna? Is Dajjal mentioned in the Quran? Subhanallah. So how can you claim that wallahi if it's not in the quran i will not accept it if it had importance allah would have mentioned it this is nonsense allah revealed the quran to be a general book that is a miracle to the end of time ask the christians where I, where is the miracle of jesus they say he used to cure the ill the leopard the, the blind the deaf etc i said show me said, we don't have any proof. He had a table coming from the heavens and they ate from it. Show me. They can't. Ask the Jews, what is the miracle of your prophet? They say, he split the sea and crossed it. Can I see? He said, no. We have to believe in it. We, we don't see anything. Uh, he had a staff that changed into what? Now, okay, a snake. And he did this, he did that. But no one on earth can prove the miracle that his messenger is true. Only the Muslims. We believe that Mo Moses is a prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam. And Jesus is a prophet. We believe in all prophets of Allah because they're mentioned in our book. He said, okay, what is the miracle of your prophet? He said, he made the, the moon split. Show me. I can't. The Prophet did this, the Prophet did that. Show me, I can. But I have this Quran, which is my miracle. 
and in it without any doubt a miracle until the end of time the only scripture on earth of a religion that is in the native language of people who speak it how many Arabs do we have 350 million and they all can read the Quran and understand it native and even if we come to all copies of the Quran and we burn it to the ground there's not a single copy remaining tomorrow we will write an identical copy because it's preserved in the hearts of tens of millions of Muslims seven year old in Indonesia doesn't know a single word in Arabic I lead the prayer in the masjid I make a mistake he he corrects me La ilaha illallah. he doesn't know and I don't feel arrogant and I say no you don't know I can I'm, I'm correct myself because this is the book of Allah Allah preserved it neither the Jews can bring me the Old Testament neither the Christians cannot bring me the New Testament no scriptures Aramaic translated into Hebrew translated into Latin translated into English who knows what the original said Quran is the miracle so don't expect it to tell you every single thing but at the same time don't be blinded by claiming that Tawheed is not there Tawheed is there Tawheed is to make something one what is one in Arabic Wahid Allahul Ahad so it all stems from the same word in Arabic Tawheed is from Wahada to make something as one and technically speaking it is divided into three categories what are these three categories Tawheed al rububiyyah Tawheed al uluhiyya Tawheed al asma was sifat can you translate we don't know Arabic okay I will do that the first type of Tawheed I feel like in, in, in a microwave mashallah with all this light in front of me if I get tan that's good I forgot my cream though طيب, excuse me for doing this but otherwise I'm gonna melt like butter so I have to get some air so Sheikh take us easy Tawheed what is Tawheed al-Rububiyyah Tawheed al-Rububiyyah actually means the oneness of Allah or Tawheed the of Lordship what do you mean by Lordship who's your Lord Allah Azza wa Jal can you explain Allah is the creator Allah is the provider Allah is the giver of life and death Allah Azza wa Jal is the facilitator of everything we do correct so Tawheed al rububiyyah how do I worship Allah Azza wa Jal by acknowledging that no one gives risk except him no one gives success except him no one gives life or takes it except him no one facilitates our affairs except him so these are the things that only him can do who makes the rain fall Allah Azza wa Jal who makes the crops grow Allah Azza wa Jal so this is mentioned in the book of Allah in so many places but it's never referred to as Tawheed al rububiyyah because we don't have to one verse Allah says in the Quran say who provides for you from the sky and from the earth or who owns hearing and the sight and who brings out the living from the dead and brings out the dead from the living and who disposes the affairs they will say the idol worshippers they will say Allah even the idol worshippers acknowledge Allah then says will you not then be afraid of Allah's punishment it, what is this Allah is telling us about his attributes about his actions and this is Tawheed al rububiyyah so if I come and say this person has the ability to grant me risk or that person or that idol can make my wife pregnant 
This is shirk. I'm associating others with Allah because this is only done by Allah. And this is why when Ibrahim, peace be upon him, spoke with that tyrant king, trying to call him to Islam, he says, my Lord gives life and death. What did the king say? He said, I also give life and death. Bring me two prisoners. He brought them, boom, executed one. And the second one, he said, go, you're free. So I give life and death. Ibrahim did not go technical. No, 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 I did not mean that. No, 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 we don't have time. Ibrahim simply said, okay, Allah brings the sun from the east. Bring it from the west. The guy was helpless. Khalas. This I cannot reply to. I cannot do that. Then this means I'm not a God. So this is what kind of Tawheed? Rububiyya. Tawheed of Lordship. To acknowledge that he's Lord, your Lord. So if you go to a court and the judge says, bow to me and say, yes, my Lord. Hey, hey, hey. Where, where are you? This is not possible. My Lord is Allah Azza wa Jal. Which moves us to the second type of Tawheed. Tawheedul Uluhiyyah. The Tawheed of worship. Meaning I do not worship other than Allah. Okay, what do you mean by worship? Any form of worship that can only be attributed to Allah. If you attribute it to someone else, this means that you are mushrik. Give me an example. Hello? Huh? Sajda, prostration, salah, tawaf, slaughtering for Mawlana, for, for the peer, for the engraved grave person, calling for help. Al madad, al madad, al ghawth, al ghawth. To someone who is dead, all of these forms of worship. If I swear, I tell you, swear by Allah, you did not steal. I swear by Allah, I did not steal. Swear by your Sheikh that you did not steal. Oh, I cannot lie. Sheikh? No. A'udhu Billah. How do you? You want me to go to hell? Akhi, you just swore by Allah. See, Allah is forgiving, but my Sheikh will take me to hell. This is happening. This is shirk. Allah says in the Quran, and your Lord has decreed that you not worship except him. Okay, and Allah says also in Surah An-Nisa, and worship Allah and do not associate any with Him. So this is Tawheed al-Uluhiyyah. There are hundreds of verses of the Quran. If you read it, it all tells you, do not associate others with Allah. Not in swearing, not in fearing, not in hoping, not in invoking, not in seeking refuge in. All of this is haram. Providing that this is something only Allah can do. Meaning, I have a big box. Please, can you give me a hand? Is this haram? Huh? Why is halal? Because he's able to carry it. But if I tell him, Akhi, please, can you make me fly? You know, fly, literally fly. Or, Akhi, can, uh, uh, my, my father died yesterday. Can you bring him to life? This is shirk. Only Allah can do this. I cannot ask of you. Fear. If I see a lion coming to me, I say, I have tawheed. I'm not going to be afraid. Fear is only from Allah. Bon appetit. He will eat you. But this is natural fear. You see a lion coming, what do you do? Run the hell away. A brother sent me a question, said, Sheikh, I am praying and a lion comes to attack me. Should I continue to pray? I said to him, yes, if your wudu is intact. <laughs> yes, but most likely if you're praying and a lion is next to you, I think you're going to lose your wudu. So definitely you cannot pray. What kind of questions is this? Some people, sometimes I don't know. So, Tawheed al-Uluhiyyah is the most important Tawheed of all three types. Why? Because the idol worshippers believe that their idols cannot benefit them. They, they believe that it is only Allah who created the heavens and the earth. No one comes and says, Jesus created the heavens and the earth. No one comes and says, Buddha 
is the provider or the one who created the they all acknowledge only god only allah only the creator who is worthy of being worshipped but we associate others with him for different reasons and this is why all the messengers were sent to their nations because they wanted to clear out this shirk of the land Allah says, and we did not send any messenger before you, O Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But we inspired him saying, la ilaha illa ana. There is no one that is worship, worthy of being worshipped except I, Allah. So worship me alone and none else. All messengers of Allah were sent with this type of emphasis on tawheed, tawheed al-uluhiyya. So if someone believes, and there are a lot who say, I believe in the existence of Allah, even Christians. I believe that Jesus is not the son of Allah. He's a messenger. I believe that Allah Azza wa Jal is the creator, the provider. So Tawheed al-Rububiyyah is intact. Yet he worships other with Allah. He asks other with Allah. He is a mushrik. Finally, not for the lecture, only for the divisions of Tawheed. We're just warming up. I'm warming up. You're sitting here in cold, mashallah. Air conditioning is coming to you. Mashallah, tabarakallah. I will not give it evil eye. And if it goes great, <laughs> says Sheikh did it. Anyhow, the third is what? Tawheedu al Asma. Asma is a plural of ism. Ism is the name. So, and, and sifat is the plural of sifa. So, the Tawheed of names and attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal. And this is quite easy. Do not call Allah Azza wa Jal except with what Allah called himself in the Quran or his messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called him. Can any of the companions of the Prophet come to us and say so and so is a name of Allah? This is unacceptable because they cannot do this without attributing it to revelation, to wahi. Without wahi, it's unacceptable. So the Tawheed of Asma wa Sifat comes only from revelation, one. And Tawheed Asma wa Sifat is based on affirming and negating. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, this beautiful, concise, but perfect ayah, Allah says, there is nothing like unto him. This is negating. There is nothing like unto him, Azza wa Jal. Nothing. Okay, where is the affirmation? And then Allah says immediately, and he is the all hearing, the all seeing. So when we say there's nothing unto him like him, but we affirm that he hears, attribute, that he sees, attribute. Okay, I hear and I see. Is it the same? No. The, the, I'm alive. Allah is alive. Is my life and Allah's life the same? Allah's life is mandatory and eternal. He was, he is the first without a beginning. The last without an end. And nothing is like him subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you have to believe that Allah is excelled. Nothing is like him. But at the same time, you have to give him the names and attributes that he gave to himself and the messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, described him with now having gone through tawheed did anything you hear sound illogical seriously raise your hand if you have question, if you have queries about what i said we will open the floor for questions any questions even if it's something any against islam but you need clarification. Maybe someone who's not a Muslim among us. And maybe a, a, a person who's Christian, he has some doubts. No problem. Take your freedom. I don't have any guns with me now, but it's in the car. I can bring it. No, don't worry. So what I said about Tawheed, does it sound logical? Is it from Quran and Sunnah? Then why are they tarnishing the reputation of Tawheed? Before we go to that, if there is enough time, which I don't think, maybe, Allah Kareem, 
Let us see some of the benefits of Tawheed. One, Allah Azza wa Jal sent the messengers, revealed the scriptures to them only for the sake of establishing Tawheed. Allah says in the Quran, and we sent not before you any messenger except that we revealed to him that there is no deity except me, so worship me. So Allah tells us in black and white in the Quran, no messenger was sent except for this purpose. Purpose of what? Tawheed. Tayyip. Tawheed, one of the benefits, it erases all of your sins. We're sinful. But if you have proper Tawheed, now I'm not talking about the theoretical. What I told you about the three types, this is what? Theoretical, meaning that you have to implement it in your life. Otherwise, any professor in Cambridge or in Yale who is a professor in Islamic studies, but he's not a Muslim. If I ask him, would he answer? Yes, he would write a thesis because this is his speciality. I will, he will tell me Tawheed al rububiyyah Tawheed al-Isma wa sifa Tawheed al this and that. Does it benefit him? Because he's not implementing it. So this theoretical part, we're through. Now, the actual implementation, Allah erases all of your sins if you implement it correctly. The Prophet said, alayhi salatu salam, Allah, the Almighty said, this is Hadith Qudsi. O son of Adam, if you come to me with water bags filled of sins as much as it would fill the whole earth, meaning that if you come with sins as much as the whole earth, but you do not associate others with me, I will fill the whole earth forgiveness for you with Tawheed. Huh? Because you have Tawheed, your sins will be countered by Allah's forgiveness. Okay, among the benefits of Tawheed, the first thing you are asked about in your grave is Tawheed. Allah says in the Quran, Allah keeps firm those who believe with the firm word. This is Al-Qawl Al-Thabit. The firm word. What is the firm word? La ilaha illallah. This is the statement of Tawheed. There is no God worthy of being worshipped except Allah. Tawheed al-Rububiyya, al-Uluhiyya, al-Asma wa sifat Allah says, Allah keeps firm those who believe with the firm word in worldly life, meaning in this life and in the grave, and in the hereafter, meaning after resurrection. And Allah sends astray the wrongdoers. I pray to Allah that he makes me and you among those who are steadfast in their graves and in the hereafter. This ayah is a clear evidence and proof of the torment of the grave. Those who are steadfast, those who say this word will be saved in the graves because they have Tawheed. It is a prerequisite for you to enter Jannah that you have Tawheed. We mentioned this in the very beginning. Allah says in the Quran, indeed, he who associates others with Allah, Allah has forbidden him paradise. Full stop. So no way that you may go to a peer's grave, to a Mawlana's grave, and you slaughter a sheep to him, and you stand up in submissiveness and say, Mawlana, it's been a long time, I have a lot of sins, forgive my sins. One of the people of Saudi Arabia, where I come from, he's from Mecca. He wrote a book on the etiquette of visiting the Prophet's grave. And in the book, he says, when you come to the grave, face the grave of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. Put your hand over your left on your chest and stand in submissiveness and humility and say, Assalamu alayka ya awwal, Assalamu alayka ya akhir, Assalamu alayka ya zahir, Assalamu alayka ya batin. Whose names are these? Allah. Allah's names. 
And he's saying that these also can be shared by the Prophet ﷺ. He's al awwal wal a. This is ayah number three in Surah Al Taghabun. Who al awwal wal Surah Al Hadid. Who al awwal wal akhir wal zahir wal batin. Who be kulli shayin alim. What are you talking about? She says, No, no, no. It's okay. It's okay. No, it's not okay. This is shirk. If you do it, you are down the drain. Tawheed makes you happy. Why is it drugs? Nowadays, ask people how to become happy. Take some crack. Take some amphetamine. A joint of marijuana. In, do not inhale. Inhale. Clinton didn't inhale. But you can inhale. They do drugs. Why do you do drugs? It makes me happy. It makes me cool. This is a poison. You do drugs. You're happy. You sell your wife, you sell your daughter, you sell your mother, and you sell your sister. You do, do, do drugs, people will do you and will take your money and you will ruin your life and you'll end up either committing suicide or in jail. Drugs is something that takes your mind away. Are you insane or sane? What are you doing? Say, I want to be happy. You want to be happy? Do you believe in Allah? He says, yes. Do you believe in the Quran? He says, yes. Okay, listen what Allah says about happiness. Allah says, and if only the people of the cities had believed and feared Allah, we would have opened upon them blessings from the heaven and the earth, but they denied the messengers, so we seized them for what they were earning. Allah tells you, if you believe, He will open blessings from the heavens and from the earth. But you don't. And this is why you deserve Allah's punishment. Allah says in the Quran, whoever does righteousness, Tawheed, whether male or female, while he is a believer, we will surely cause him to live a good life. And we will surely give them their reward in the hereafter. A good life where? In this dunya, wallahi, and I swear, and I'm accountable for my oath in front of Allah. Wallahi, if you have proper tawheed, you are the happiest man on earth. When you have full trust in Allah, full dependence and reliance only on Allah Azza wa Jal, you are the happiest man, even if you don't have tonight's dinner. I hope my host has tonight's dinner, inshallah. <laughs> But I'm happy, even if I don't have dinner. Why? Because I have my heart on cruise control. I have my heart overdrive. I trust Allah. Whatever Allah does, I know it's for my benefit. And this is why Allah makes me live a happy life. And what awaits me in the day of judgment is far, far, far better and greater. Only if, if you believe. When you don't believe, you have a problem. Why? Because you can't get happy except with drinking whiskey or smoking hash or taking heroin or doing cocaine. You can't be happy until you go to the nightclub, dance, music, maybe get lucky, maybe not, because you may get HIV. How lucky was that? A sister sent me a question a couple of days ago. She acquired herpes and she repented but she has herpes and she wants to get married what to do i said i don't know you can look for another muslim brother who repented who has herpes alhamdulillah seriously but you cannot marry someone who's well and not tell him this is cheating and this is harming muslims in a, in a way you want happiness you find happiness in tawheed in trusting Allah Azza wa Jal. The only means of guidance, it's not Google, it's not your GPS. The only means of guidance is Tawheed. Allah Azza wa Jal says, they who believe and do not mix their belief with injustice, with shirk, those will have security and they are rightly guided. You want security in this life and the hereafter? Or you want to be afraid on the hereafter? 
on the day of judgment when you see hell and see people falling into it and you see this sirat in front of you the bridge on top of hell it is as thin as a blade it is as sharp as a blade as thin as a hairline and you have to walk and once you put your foot it's all pitch dark unless you have light and the light is your tawheed that will shine over the path for you and your tawheed the stronger it is the wider this bridge is so you walk like lightning the first patch that passes the prophet says they are like lightning then they are like a hurricane so fast then they are on horseback then there are people running then there are people walking then there are people walking and tripl tripping and falling and then there are people who are crawling and the hooks of hell comes and takes them the hypocrites come they see the, the, the straight path it's dark then they get a tiny light in their toe so they walk just as they are middle way the lights off like Nigeria <laughs> but with the generators inshallah we're good hands there are no generators on the sarat you are in trouble this is where tawheed comes your belief in Allah Azza wa Jal would make everything light for you and the first thing we have to acknowledge and know that Tawheed is the main thing you call people to when you meet a Christian when you meet a Jew don't begin except with Tawheed some brothers talk to non-Muslims and say oh, music is haram why are you talking to him about music they say oh sister you're Christian but you have to cover cover what this is ridiculous when you speak to a non-Muslim, leave everything aside. Regardless of their drinking, of their partying, of not wearing the hijab, this is nonsense. This is of not great importance. This is not important. What is important? To save him from hellfire and admit him to Jannah. How to do this? Tawheed. And this is why the Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, to Mu'adh ibn Jabal. May Allah be pleased with him. When he sent him to Yemen. And Yemen were all Jews and Christians. So he told him, he briefed him. Mu'adh, you will come to people of the book of the scriptures. Let it be the first thing you call them to is Tawheed. And this was narrated or reported in Sahih al-Bukhari. So the word Yuwahidullah, Tawheed, is mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari. So the first thing you call them to is Tawheed. So when you want to call someone who is not a Muslim, don't start with yani, things that are not of great importance. The first thing, Akhi, how many gods do you have? He said, one. One, what about Jesus and, and the Holy Spirit? He said, yeah, we have three in one. This is head and shoulder. This is the shampoo we have. It's two in one or three in one with conditioner. No, it cannot be. It's only one God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. So you talk to him about Tawheed. He said, no, 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 we, Jesus is also God. He said, is he eternal? Was he there in the beginning? He said, no, no, he came uh, 2000 BC or uh, 2000 years ago. Where was he before that? Um, let me check. So what do you mean by let me check? Okay, if he's God and he was in the belly of Mary, who was running the universe? It was the father. So how can the father be the son? And the son, if you have four bad sons, disobedient, abusive, and one good righteous son, would you kill him for the sins of the four? Is this logical? Would, would this be his reward? Then why would Allah Azza wa Jal kill his own beloved son for the sins of the universe? Hello? 
Allah can Azza wa Jalla forgive all of their sins. Why kill his own son and torture him? You can go on on Tawheed, but don't divert. Speak only on establishing the oneness of Allah. In five to ten minutes, every Christian you speak to, if he's objective, you say, I, I hear you, I believe what you, I actually don't believe in three in one. I believe that the Creator is one. Alhamdulillah, khalas, we've established Tawheed. We can go on into many different fields, but not before establishing Tawheed. Uh, we have little time, but it is crucially important to protect Tawheed. What do you mean by protecting Tawheed? Get my AK-47 and start protecting Tawheed? No. Quran and Sunnah. We are told in so many places things that violate Tawheed and how to protect it. For example, Islam prohibits any ambiguous words that can come. For example, if I say, if it weren't for my dog, you know, I ha okay, not, I don't have a dog. My neighbor has a dog. And at night, a burglar, a burglar, hamburger, uh, a burglar comes in to steal my house. I'm asleep. The dog of my neighbor barks at him. The burglar is scared. He runs away. I wake up in the morning, I say, Alhamdulillah, had it not been for my, dog, my neighbor's dog, the thief would have broken into my home and stole whatever he wanted. Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, says, this is shirk. For attributing, saving your home to the dog. Now, I used to be in the corporate business. I used to be a general manager. And whenever we have a discussion and preparation of the budget, all heads of departments come and they show you what they did in the fiscal year and what is their forecast for next year. So as a GM or a VP, I hold the pointer and say, and uh, uh, the th past three months, I, am, I succeeded in raising the funds and reducing the cost. I secured three projects. I did this, I did that. All of this is shirk. When you attribute something, attribute it to Allah. So you say, with the grace of Allah, Allah made me manage to do this, to do this, to do this. Always attribute it to Allah to avoid shirk. This is Tawheed. Also, it is shirk to swear with other than Allah. In Egypt, they always say, with Nabi by the prophet wow the, the letter wow in arabic is one of the three letters of swearing so they say win nabi in syria they say usharafi with my honor in palestine they may say Uras abi with the head of my father all of this is shirk because you're swearing with other than allah and you cannot swear except by allah or his beautiful names and attributes it is part of protecting tawheed that you do not pray regular prayer in a cemetery there are graves and i want to pray asr who are you praying asr to to allah your prayer is invalid oh, why because you're doing it in a cemetery and this is a breach of tawheed some people would come tomorrow and build a masjid and building a masjid over a grave is also not permissible. And praying in a masjid that has a grave is not permissible. And this is why if you go to Turkey, if you go to Sudan, if you go to so many countries that have a grave in the masjid, after Salah, they will come to the grave and say, it's been five years, I don't have children. Please grant me a child. They believe that he has the power to make a change or a difference in our lives. This is why we are prohibited to pray when the sun is rising or the sun is setting. Because the idol worshippers do prostrate to the sun. This is why we cannot prostrate to other than Allah. Some cultures, 
the ruler sits and they come and they prostrate on their knees to him. What is this? It's cultural, Shaykh. It's okay. It's, no, it's not okay. not okay. This can only be done to Allah Azza wa Jal. Even when Mu'adh ibn Jabal came back from Yemen, the first thing he did, he prostrated to the Prophet والسلام, The Prophet was outraged. Mu'adh, what are you doing? He said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, I saw them do this to their kings out of respect, so I wanted to respect you more. What did the Prophet say, alayhi salatu wasalam? If I were to order someone to prostrate to someone else, I would have ordered a woman or a wife to prostrate to her husband. But prostration to others is haram. Now, I will conclude with this, inshallah. Is Tawheed important? Do you have any doubt about Tawheed? Listen to this hadith. The Prophet said alayhi salatu wasalam, the Jews were divided into 71 sect. The Christians were divided into 72 sects. My ummah will be divided into 73 sects. All are in hell except one. And they said, which one, O Prophet of Allah? He said, the one that is following my footsteps and my companions. Now, 72 sects are in hell. One is only in where? In Jannah. Hanbali, Hanafi, Maliki, Shafi'i. Which one of them is in hell? Hello? Huh? None. Why none? The Prophet said, all of them except one. He said, listen. He was not referring to whether you put your hands on your chest or on your sides. This is not a sect. This is a difference of opinion in fiqh. No problem in that. Fiqh has no problem, has, does not divide the ummah into sects. What divides the ummah is the aqeedah, the tawheed. When someone comes and says, there is a messenger after Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. And his name is Ghulam Mirza. Oh, oh, where, where are you going? He said, yes, yes, we're Muslims. No, you're not Muslims. You are among the 72. When someone comes to me and says, I'm a Muslim. I say, la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. I said, mashaAllah, I like you, my brother. While I'm shaking hands, he says, yes, but I slander Mother Aisha. She committed zina. And I curse Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and the rest of the companions. A'udhu billahi min ash rajim I have to wash my hands seven times, one with soil. <laughs> this is najis, kafir. You slander my mother Aisha, whom Allah has purified her in Surah An-Nur, in Quran, one of the two. Either you're a kafir or the Quran is false. It, two cannot be. So definitely you're a kafir. So this is part of the 72. And this is why Tawheed is the most crucial and important piece of knowledge that if you spend your entire life purifying your heart, then it would not be to a waste. Final word. I know Sheikh Nasser is going to kill me because I've said this six times. But final word. How to implement Tawheed? Ah, this is something in the heart. Saying La ilaha illallah is done by the hypocrites. If the hypocrites come and testify to you, Muhammad, that you are the Prophet of Allah, Wallahu, لا, Wallahu ya'lamu innaka la rasuluh, and Allah knows that you are his messenger, yet Allah testifies that the hypocrites are liars. So what they said with the tongue did not benefit them. That is why Tawheed has to be acknowledged and you have to have the full conviction in your heart. One, you have to say it with your tongue. Two, you have to act upon it. I pray to Allah that he makes us die on the word of Tawheed and he makes us live on the word of Tawheed and he resurrects us on the day of judgment on the word of Tawheed. هذا والله أعلم ونسبة العلم إليه أسلم وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين